Hello. Another evening. <laughs> this is the story of, <laughs> yeah. of a fuel pump that couldn't. Didn't meet the specification. Yeah. Hello everybody, welcome back. It's Thursday, it's not Wednesday. We couldn't make it happen yesterday because uh, of parts availability. So the parts showed up today and here we are uh, working on Pete's car. In the past couple of videos, he hasn't been doing too well at the track and on the street has had an issue with surging. We figured out what it was and let me take you to the data log here. All right, sniper data log. Just trying to, to get to the bare bones here of what we're looking at. So green is throttle position. So this is a like a second gear and third gear pull. It's gone full throttle. Red is RPMs. This brownish red is the fuel pressure. The blue is boost pressure. The yellow is injector duty cycle. As you can see about here, we're looking okay. If I click, it'll bring you over to the side. We still got about 57 and a half PSI of fuel pressure. Nominal about 59, so it's starting to fall off a little bit once he went to full throttle. Boost pressure doesn't really peak out here, but on the, uh, the, the third gear pull, you see boost pressure increases, increases, increases with RPM. If we click over here, boost pressure is 12.7, so it's really good. Still a full throttle, 6,300 RPMs. Injector duty cycle went up to 98% uh, here. You know, go a little over a little more and we are at 100.9% of injector duty cycle. So this is, remember, it's the 1200 horsepower version of the Holley Super Sniper. And there's no way that <laughs> Pete is running 100% duty cycle and running 1200 horsepower and uh, 347 with the V1 trim supercharger because fuel pressure right here is falling, falling, falling. And at the bottom, fuel pressure is only 35.7 PSI. So almost half of what it should be, even at regular, uh, you know, non-boost levels is 59 PSI. This is the boost referenced fuel pressure regulator. So the fuel pressure should be rising with RPM and boost pressure. And it is not, it is falling, falling, falling. About right here, is where you've got about 58.8 PSI. So it's about 59 PSI. That is about as much as you can get out of that uh, Bosch 200 liter per hour fuel pump that uh, we have in it. Now, it is great that we have this data log capability in this, the Holly system that can pinpoint exactly what's going on. You can see the ramifications from it and the injector duty cycle trying to compensate for the lack of fuel pressure. It's giving it more and more fuel with the injector duty cycle, trying to keep the air fuel ratios in check. The green is still throttle positions, second gear and third gear pulls. We have the target air fuel ratio is this line right down there, there you go. We have it under full boogie, 11.7. The actual AFR is the magenta line here, trying to make its changes to keep up to make it match the target. Again, you can see the injector duty cycle. As the injector duty cycle going way up, it's still being able to compensate and get the actual AFRs to the target. Barely, 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 because at the end of this all, Right about here, when the injector duty cycle is over 100%, it's still managing it just. So if he had any less fuel pump, the AFRs would have probably spiked lean and he could have really put his engine in jeopardy by making it go lean and hurting it. They say the Holly Sniper is not self-learning, but it is very self-compensating if you let it. But it has definitely done its job to help save the engine. This is why we had to go and get a new fuel pump. So I'll take you back to the garage. What we got here, a brand new fuel pump. A big fuel pump. Well, <laughs> it's the same exact physical size specifications in regards to inlet and outlet fittings that the current one is, except this one flows 400 liters per hour at 40 PSI. It's got quite a hefty fuel demand. I mean, 347 with a a V1 blower with 12 pounds of boost. And I don't think that the engine would have survived if it wasn't for the Holly Sniper giving it extra fuel and duty cycle because it increased the duty cycle to 100% to give it more fuel as the fuel pressure was dropping off to try to keep the AFR in a good range. Which so, it did. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. stayed at 11.6. Yeah. So, but it was at 100%. Yeah. <laughs> 
So. And I'm not making 1,200 horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the Super Sniper is good for 1,200 horse, but uh, without the right fuel pressure, it's never ever going to do that. So. Hence, twice the flow. And with the overbuilt fuel system that this thing has, as in regards to the mm -hmm. Dash 10 lines, the heavy duty air motor regulator, the Dash uh, 8 return lines, yeah. you know, we have the fuel system. We just need the good fuel pump. Because the pump initially, showed great promise because we went to the track he ran a personal best but that was when it was still learning and he was just easing into it not being very aggressive that's when the old uh, blow off valve had the old spring in it which was uh, reducing the boost so the fuel demand didn't need to be as high as it is now once we fixed the the boost loss and we're starting to lean on it a little bit more and the, the shortcomings in the fuel system really made itself apparent we are going to get under there. Well, we got to take the fuel out first. Theoretically swap this pump out one for one. And uh, yeah, we'll show you what we got going on. So, all right. Yeah, hopefully those fittings should all be exactly the same. Yeah. Because AM sells the same spec pump. This is a 50-1009. What was the other one? 50-1008 or something like that same exact pump except it has dedicated an fittings on each end and this matches the bosch pump that's in there exactly but it has the same metric ends on it so in theory <laughs> according to the specs we should just be able to unbolt the current pump and screw this pump straight into the fittings that we already have and right in not have any issues it's the same except it's just fancy painted uh, yeah. Same check valve and everything. So, all right, let's uh, let's suck the gas out and get to it. Mm, out pretty good. Dusty blue remnants from the gender reveal around here. <laughs> As Pete uh, still sucks the fuel out of the tank. So here is the replacement pump, a little bit longer than the other one. Hopefully the fitting ends will be the same. And one thing we have to address is this right here has been rubbing on the sway bar. We're gonna have to shorten up this dash 10 A in line, probably by an inch. That'll bring the fitting over. And plenty of slack to make up for it in other areas. It feels left here. Yeah, still quite a bit. <laughs> Keep on pressing. <laughs> yeah, we got plenty of flow feeding this pump, that's for sure. So let's just decide this is a lot quicker way than the other pump is going to be. So I hope it don't got more than five gallons. I have to shove my finger in that thing <laughs> so you find another gas can. So we just cracked them all loose. Everything should swap over. That looks pretty straightforward. <laughs> it's never mung in simple, is it? So this is slightly different as well, as this has got a... It's got a very coarse thread. I don't think we need to do that. We need that. It's like a copper washer. Yeah. yeah. And then... Why does that need that? That'll go straight in, won't it? It will. Okay, so. So that ends good. What about. This what, ends not. So what's the thread? Well, it's massive. Well, they said it was supposed to be the same as this. Yeah. So is this still a stupid metric thread that we're going to need an adapter for? Or will this AN, if we take the black one out of the, 
there. A lot going on. Um, possibly. We could have blamed that bit on John. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, that's looking good, Mike. Oh. Wrong way. Yeah, that would <laughs> help, wouldn't it? Feel right? It does, feels really good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's orange. <laughs> well, that's from the other direction. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but even the instructor or the, the spec said that this thread should have been that. Yeah, but did, did we get this or did that Ooh, come with it? I don't remember. Well, it don't matter, it's, yeah. it's working. So we now have... We need to tighten all this up. Tighten it all up. We can fit that, but we need to shorten this up by about a half inch. So we'll do we'll do all of this, mm -hmm. put it in, move it. That will then give us our distance for that, won't it? Well, that has plenty of flex in it. Yeah. This, uh, the fuel filter is right on the edge of the band clamp anyway. Yeah. So we don't, that's why I'd like to move it an inch, but I don't think we have an inch unless we move the whole bracket right now. So we just uh, probably shorten this up by the minimum amount possible. Yeah. And then uh, go back at it. All right, back in a few minutes. All right, straight from the garage floor. We're all in. This is shortened. So this shouldn't hit the sway bar anymore. And we're all set up. Had to crimp on a new wire terminal because the positive one was bigger than the previous Bosch pump. The negative one was the same. So we're all tight. We have about one gallon in the tank and we're gonna see if it'll prime. So I guess you can hit it. So like it tried to. Maybe it sucked it out enough already. We may need to put a little bit more in. Yeah. Uh, well, that was good suction though. Yeah, let's put a little bit more fuel in and uh, I want to abuse this, this pump with cavitating it straight away. All right, <laughs> five more gallons on the tank. Hit it again, Pete. Yeah. That sounds better. That sounds good. Hit it one more time. I'm just going to check for leaks. Ready? Yep. Yeah, looks good. All right, uh, all right, coming up there. Let's try to fire it up. All right, uh, just hit the key. We've already primed it a couple times, so there should be plenty of fuel in there. So just turn it forward and let it light it off. We have to reset the fuel pressure now that we got a new pump making different pressures, so. Uh, where's your handheld? Oh, let me come around. So the, the one thing we haven't got is fuel pressure. Where did we have it before? We haven't. So we don't oh, we we need, need, the it on, need it on the computer, don't we? Oh, okay. Uh, let's go get the laptop before it gets too warm. Alright, we just got back from the test drive. I didn't film any of that because it's so dark in the car. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Uh, well, it's still learning again. Yeah. So let's, uh, oh. we did two data logs and uh, we'll take a look at them on the laptop, see what they got to say. You got your headlights on still? You got your SIM card? All right, let's uh, pull it up here. We tried to recreate the first data log, as far as a, you know, a second gear and third gear pulls, it was a, it was a little uneasy getting into it because we're still trying
trying to take it easy and let it learn. So it really wasn't as aggressive as we would expect. It was late at night, traffic on the road, and this is the best we could get. Get rid of boost, see it a little bit easier. And as you can tell, pressure is not dropping off anymore. If we go at the top of third gear, right there, we're looking at 6,200-ish RPM, 97% uh, throttle. Fuel pressure is 65.7 PSI right there. And you can see it slightly increases. I had the boost pressure back in there so it's not falling off like it was in the previous one and one pretty interesting thing to note so the duty cycle for the injectors is here because before it was at 100.7 like percent at the top of the third gear now we're at 43.8 percent so less way less than half but actually 43.8 percent of what it was previously. Here is the, the yellowish line is the target air fuel ratio and the magenta line again is the actual. So it's still pretty jagged. It is still learning. It is still going back and forth, trying to find its happy place. Once it does a little bit more learning and we smooth out the fuel table, the magenta line will be much smoother. It's still, the air fuel ratios are still good. And uh, this is a good result. I mean, it's a little anticlimactic for a video simply because and we're, we're ending on some meat doing some pointy talkies but hopefully you get the gist of you know, what happens if your fuel pump is not up to snuff how you can figure it out before it's too late and uh, the results of actually increasing the fuel pressure putting a good fuel pump in it and getting good results there's not as much you know the surging like there was before if pete didn't really even even i as a passenger didn't feel any surging we're ready to go back to the track and see what this thing can do we're gonna be more into the block splitting territory of of what his engine is capable of we're gonna let it eat and see what we can get out of it so see if you can get it work on the personal best we get another track date before the end of the season thanks for guys for sticking to the end i know this is a little nerdy hopefully we'll be see more like this soon and i'll catch you guys again later